There's one chicken in your backyard. I can't even find it. We'll head around to all the towns. Head away on the day. South Aussie with cars is on. Sit down. South Aussie with cars Great to have your company, folks. I'm dedicating this episode of South Aussie with Cozzy to show you guys around Roxby Downs and Olympic Dam. By the way, that conveyor belt up there pumps out 1,500 tonnes of that ore, which contains gold, it contains silver, and most importantly, it contains copper. And it pumps out one and a half tonnes every single hour, 24 hours a day. Now we know Olympic Dam is of course important for Roxby Downs, but what does it mean for the rest of the state? This mine means big bucks and plenty of jobs right across SA. And South Aussie with Cozzy has been given access to some of the most amazing parts of this huge mine. In the next half hour, I'll take you through the state's biggest mine and I'll find out what makes it tick. And once you're decked out in the orange with the hard hat and the sunnies, you are officially a fully fledged miner of Olympic Dam. How cool is this? This place here has hundreds of kilometres of tunnels and hundreds of workers are underground right now. Whilst most employees are from South Australia, men and women from all over the country work here. The story of how BHP was formed is an absolute cracker. BHP owes its success to the man who started it all, Mr Charles Rasp, a boundary rider and a stockman. Riding his horse near Broken Hill in 1883, he discovered what would become the largest single source of silver, lead and zinc in the world, measuring 7.5 kilometres long and 250 metres wide. It would eventually generate over $100 billion in wealth. After Rasp made the discovery, he formed a group of seven men who formed the company BHP, which of course stood for Broken Hill Proprietary. This group of men became famously known as the Syndicate of Seven. Yet, only four of the seven men made really good money from the mine. Here's how their fortunes turned out. Philip Charlie went on and had eight kids and he did very well, as did George McCulloch, who retired very comfortably. Charles Rasp, the discoverer, did very, very well. David James, well, he used his fortune to fulfill his dream of breeding racehorses, and he purchased a farm just outside of Kapunda. In 1895, his horse Aora actually won the Melbourne Cup and jumped at odds of 50 to 1. Some people have all of the luck. Well, not all people. These three blokes who were the founders of BHP hardly made a cent. George Lind sold his share in BHP for next to nothing before the true value of the resource was discovered. George Urquhart, he did the worst of all, selling his share to the bloke that discovered it, Mr. Charles Rasp. And for how much? Well, this is what actually hurts the most. It was 1884 and Urquhart sold his 15% share in BHP for a lousy 20 pounds. But my favourite story of lost fortune was that of old James Paul. He exchanged half of his 15% share for 10 cows and sold the other half for very little. But guess who he actually swapped the cows with? Well, it was none other than Sir Sidney Kidman. Kidman now owns 7.5% of BHP. Sadly for the Cattle King, Kidman sold his share and doubled his money a year later. He was happy back then, but had he have kept his share, Kidman would have made more money off mining than the value of all of his cattle properties and cattle combined. If the men in the Syndicate of Seven had kept their 15% share today, it would be worth over $20 billion each. This discovery at Broken Hill would change Australia from an agriculture to an industrial nation, which to this day generates billions for the country. BHP is one of the world's biggest miners and owns Olympic Dam near Roxby Downs. Adrian tells us exactly what happens here. So we're predominantly a copper mine, but we also do produce uh, uranium concentrate and then also gold and silver. So it's a multi-decade resource, so probably one of the biggest 
copper resources and certainly one of the largest uranium resources around. I guess we're unique in that we're extracting it out of the ground all the way through to final products, whereas some of the other places in Australia just produce what we call a concentrate, whereas we take that all the way through to final product. Roxby Downs is 571 kilometres from Adelaide in the state's outback, and the Olympic Dam mine is 15 kilometres out of town. Here's one of our underground loaders, who worth a cool couple of million. No worries mate, wait for you, thanks for that. Thanks mate. Light vehicle down the portal, and on the left hand side is services, so we have air, water, power. Cozzy, welcome to the mine, welcome to the Hard Rock Cafe. That is hilarious, the Hard Rock Cafe, well done. Thanks. What happens here? Well, at some stage during the day, during the 12 hour shift, the guys are going to come back, have a rest, clean their hands, have a, a bit of a feed, a bit of food and a cold drink, cool down, and then they go back to work. Exactly how far down are we? Oh well, uh, OD is 100 metres above sea level. We're at what we call the 420 level, which is a safe blasting area. On the so top of the surface, are we like 420 feet down? No, no, we're metres here, so we're... 420 yeah, metres? Yeah. So that's almost, we are ha like half yeah. a kilometre. Yeah. Almost, that's, that's nuts. Yeah. So how far down does it actually go? How well, much further? Our Clark shaft is the, is the deepest part of the mine, and uh, I think figure was around, around about 680, 700, but wow. roughly. That is one hugely deep mine, let's put it in perspective. The tallest building in Adelaide is 132 metres, the Eiffel Tower is 324, Empire State Building's 443, yet the lunchroom in the mine is 420 metres underground. And the tunnels at the mine's deepest is 700 metres. Wow. The thing I've noticed about since we've been up here is um, the camaraderie. What is it that you love about working here? Well, it's, it's everybody knows everybody, you know, like now we're getting the next generation of the miners coming through, which are our sons and daughters. So uh, my son works in the mine. He's a diesel trucking miner. A couple of things I love about the Hard Rock Cafe, and remember, we're 420 metres underground, is that all that way, they're serving this stuff, South Australian made cordial that's made near Laura in South Australia. Well done on that. The other thing I love is this. Now, Tony, this is a map of the mine. I've just had a look at the map and I've found we've got uh, the Southern Expressway, we've got Hindley Street, we've got Holden Hill up yep. here. I also love the fact that on Hindley Street, they've even got a... Oh, the wool shed, yeah. <laughs> Someone painted up the wool shed, you know. But it's, it's, you can great. relate to it if you're from Adelaide. So hundreds of metres under the ground here yep. at the Olympic Dam, there's a Hindley Street. Right and a wool shed, yep. but not one drop of alcohol. Nah, no, dry site, no alcohol at all. The equipment at Olympic Dam is just amazing. This puppy here, worth a cool $2 million brand new, holds, can you believe it, up to around about 18 tonne of ore as it takes it from the blast sites, just incredible. But where does it go once it's been dug up from here? It heads straight up to the top. What happens there? That's what we're gonna find out. Welcome back to the surface. Welcome back folks, South Aussie with Cozzy has been granted exclusive access to areas of BHP Bilton's huge Olympic Dam mine, so I've decided to show you all around an area that is so vitally important to our state, yet so few people have seen. Many women work throughout the Olympic Dam mine, and the boss of the mine is in fact Jackie McGill. Jackie is a super passionate advocate for diversity and inclusion at Olympic Dam. Right now we're standing on the stockpile at Olympic Dam and behind us you can see all the mill activity. It's a great view from up here. And this is Dags. Now, Dags, you've been here for 15 years? Yes, 15 years, two kids, lovely wife. I want to start by asking you, what does this place mean to you? Oh, it's just a special, dynamic, uh, exciting place. Uh, a heart of mining, I guess. Uh, you know, we just feed the mills here behind us and uh, smelt the product and get the copper out the gate. Mate, I've been chatting to the, the staff that work here at Olympic Dam. 
last couple of days, and it seems to me they all love it. Is, is it kind of addictive working here? Oh, everyone here at Olympic Dan, Cosy has a real passion for mining and passion for community, and they uh, enjoy working for BHP Billiton, and I think that there's vast challenges and diversity out there, Cosy, but we're a resilient mob, and uh, we're out of a red hot go. There's something special about this bloke, Dags. You see, he came up with an idea that is set to save this mine millions per year. So, what did he do? In simple terms, we once upon a time conveyed the or trucked the material out on our surface stockpiles with small trucks. Now we're we're using massive cat triple uh, seven hundred ton payload trucks to deliver uh, ore to the ROM. So that was your idea. Well, uh, collaborated effort. Welcome Roxby Downs to Rox FM 105.5 local love and loving it. Turns out old mate Dags is a bit of a radio star in these parts as well on the local community radio hosting his sports show, The Scoreboard, which shows again how much this mine is involved with the community. Whacka Packa Warren and uh, Action Jackson, they're my two co-hosts on the, on the program. It was a lot of fun. The pile of dirt that we can see in the background is probably about a 100,000 tonne of ore. In a year, we'll process about 10 million tonne per annum of ore. Um, and the main product we produce out of that is uh, metallic copper. Um, so that'll uh, get transported to Adelaide on the back of trucks in two and a half tonne lots. It's amazing to think that that pile of 100,000 tonnes is about 98% waste. So in order to sort through it and get to the good 2%, it needs to be crushed up in the mills and then melted down in the smelter. Copper is widely used around the world. In fact, 60% of the world's copper is used in electrical wiring. 20% is used in roofing and household plumbing, while 15% is used in the making of industrial machinery. And hey, how's this? Over 81,000 kilograms of copper was actually used to build the Statue of Liberty. I've been here for 27 years. Uh, what I love about it uh, is the camaraderie and the challenges that you face every day. You never stop learning. We smelt copper concentrates and turn that into a molten metal. And from that molten metal stage, we refine the metal uh, to a uh, copper percentage of about 99% and then cast it into uh, copper anodes that we send across to the refinery. To say that I am excited to be here is a complete understatement. This place is awesome. Okay, I'm going to try to explain what's happening behind me. That lava that you can see is a mixture of copper, gold and silver. And each one of those that pours out weighs about 300 kilos and at today's prices is around about $2,000. But here's the really, really cool part. How hot do you reckon that is? Have a look at it, that burning red hot lava. Well, I can tell you, it's over 1,000 degrees Celsius. And remember, water boils at 100 degrees, okay? Just when you thought that was cool. Have a listen to this. Inside the vat behind me is 350 tonnes of that stuff, that molten lava, heated up copper, gold. And inside there, the 350 tonnes is even hotter than this stuff. So I'll see with Cosby. So I'll see with Cosby. Welcome back, I'm showing you behind the scenes of Olympic Dam, a massive resource for South Australia that pumps around $1 billion a year to our economy and creates loads of jobs, not just here in the outback, but right throughout the state. Behind me is uh, what we call anodes. So they've come from our smelter um, and they're about to get loaded into the refinery. And then in the background is our final copper product. So they're the two and a half done bundles that we um, take to Port Adelaide and sell to our customers. Each of those bundles is worth about uh, roughly probably $15,000. We're a 24 seven operation. So we run 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Unfortunately, we also do run Christmas and New Year's. So public holidays, there's uh, no rest. I've uh, been here for two years, formerly in Kalgoorlie for seven or eight years. Um, yeah, I just love working for a company that uh, cares about safety and um, yeah, it's a good bunch of people that we work with, uh, we've got a good team and uh, it's just very rewarding. Basically here we, uh, we transfer copper from anode to cathode 
Uh, it's a saleable product that you see behind us. What would it take for you to get the forklift and drop one of those packs into the back of my Captiva? <laughs> yeah, everyone's asked that question. Yeah, yeah. Knows the answer, huh? Knows the answer, yeah. Olympic Dam shares a great relationship with the local community and works collectively with a large range of groups and organisations to deliver programs and initiatives for all the residents. Olympic Dam also supports events like the Pageant, Miners' Cup and the Multicultural Festival. These are all must-tend events for the locals and also visiting tourists. My favourite though has got to be the Roxby Downs races. It's one of the best race meets, I think, in the whole of the state. We moved up to Roxby Downs nine years ago when my husband got a job at the mine. Uh, when I moved, my children were one year old and four years old and Roxby Downs is perfect. It's a perfect small community. Everybody helps each other out. Um, it's fantastic for small children. It's safe. There's nothing worse than when you're almost 500 metres, that's half a K underground, and you get a jolly flat tyre. In fact, uh, there is something that's worse than that, is when you have to replace a tyre on one of these things, because how much do you reckon this tyre costs? I can tell you, it's just over $12,000, plus GST. The thing about the Olympic Dam project, and this is why I wanted to come here, is because it affects everybody in Adelaide. The flow on effect to the economy is around about a billion dollars a year, and that's from this BHP site. But it's not about mining. In the background, we can see trucks get loaded. Now, these trucks will head to Adelaide. Think about that truck driver. He stops to get petrol at Port Augusta. He stops for a steak sandwich at Port Wakefield. All the way he's creating jobs, he gets the truck back to Adelaide where it's serviced. All of these jobs are created just from Olympic Dam. So in a weird kind of way, so many of us that work in Adelaide are somehow a part of this Olympic Dam project. Welcome back folks, it's good to have your company and it's great to be here at Olympic Dam almost half a kilometre from the surface of the earth. I'm showing you just how important Olympic Dam is, not just for Roxby Downs and Outback South Australia, but for the whole of South Australia. This place is worth a billion dollars a year to the South Australian economy. And it's not all about what happens up here, the flow on effect to our state is ginormous. If you come into Roxby Downs, you have to get out and do one of the Olympic Dam tours. It's really, really cool. What they do is they put you on a bus, conveniently similar to this bus right here. Thanks, mate. You jump on and you actually can do a tour of the mine. And this is something that you simply must do. Olympic Dam Discovery Tour is the only opportunity for people to actually go and see the mine, to physically get onto the site, unless you actually work there, of course. So everyone in South Australia has probably heard about Olympic Dam, uh, so it's a great opportunity for them to come and see what happens there. You get to meet people who work there, one of the Olympic Dam staff jump on with us on the bus and let you know exactly how, what happens there, how big everything is, what they do, how much stuff they get out of the ground and what it is. I think the mine is one of the most amazing things that I've been to. I came out here to work in conservation, but working so closely with the mine has just been amazing. Uh, some of the stuff that they do out there, but really what gets me is just the size. Yep, it's massive and well worth a look. Plus, only 16 kilometres from Roxby Downs is the Arid Recovery Reserve, and it's open to the public for nocturnal tours. We have reintroduced four native mammals into the reserve and those animals do not exist outside the reserve on mainland Australia, except for the bilby. We call them our big four here at our recovery reserve and they are the burrowing betong, the greater stick nest rat, the greater bilby, and the western barred bandicoot. Oh, I got one. And one wild one, What's, who are these guys? These are the burrowing bettongs. So these were extinct in mainland Australia? Yep, and reintroduced off of islands. And now they breed like flies. Yeah. Do they bite? Yeah, they do bite. They're yeah, bite right -o. 
We have nocturnal tours on Wednesdays and Thursday nights. So you can bring the whole family along and we do some nocturnal spotlighting. We also come up to the sunset platform and we get to see animals that you won't get to see on the outside of the reserve. We are about to do an Australian first. It's called betong racing. Okay, here's the theory. We've got our little trapped betong that we've done a little study on him. He's ready to be released. We've got three holes, hole number one, hole number two, and hole number three. Which one do you think he's gonna run down? Betong release, hole one, two, or three? Have a guess. I'm going for, I'll go for this one, hole number two. Kimberly, you ready? I'm ready. People, are you ready? Betong's set, and they're racing. Here he goes, here he goes. That was nothing short of a waste of time, really, wasn't it? Well, sadly, that's all we've got time for, but I hope you've enjoyed and maybe I've even inspired you to go and have a look at Roxby Downs, South Australia. I really wanted to come up here to show you all what this project here means, Olympic Dam in Roxby Downs. It is huge, pumping over a billion dollars into our economy in South Australia every single year. It doesn't just create loads of jobs up here, but all the way through South Australia. It's super important. So many people have heard about it, now you've seen it. We'll catch you on the road. How do I steal this hard hat? Given that we've done basically the whole episode on Olympic Dam, I'd love to dedicate it, if I can, to my late father-in-law, Barry Kennard. He worked down here for years and he epitomised everything that Olympic Dam stands for. He just loved the place. This was his second family. I think it's only fitting that we dedicate this episode to Barry Kennard. Thank you. In South Australia we will go Head away, holiday South Australia all the way South Aussie with Carsey